Have you ever wondered what sort of visitors are coming to your site, where they're coming from, how they're getting there? Or you may be wondering how good your marketing doing and you're not really trusting you know, your Facebook ads manager or you're not trusting Google ads manager or you don't know how your email is performing. So you throw yourself into Google Analytics and you have a look and it all is a little bit messy. You've got all this traffic sitting in the direct section. You've got traffic sitting in not said and you've got it all over the place. Well, this is where something called UTM tagging comes in. And UTM tagging is a really useful way for you to be able to track traffic into Google Analytics and start to make sense of it so you can get better visibility on how well your marketing is doing, where your traffic is coming from, how it's performing and how much money it's generating. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through exactly what UTM tracking is, why you need it, how to use it, and how to understand it. Now, if we're just meeting, my name is Brendan Gillen and I am the head coach of the e-commerce academy where we help e-commerce store owners grow their businesses to a million dollars a year and more. I've been in e-commerce personally for over 15 years. I run my own million dollar e-commerce businesses and I've worked with some of the biggest brands in the world. I create videos like this. I teach things that I wish I knew when I was starting out so that you guys can learn from me. So if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I drop them all the time. Alternatively, if you want to learn more about the e-commerce academy, I've got a link down below but let's get straight into the video. So what is UTM tagging anyway? You see, when someone clicks a link on the internet, they click a link and it takes them from one place to another place. So let's just say it takes them from one site to your site. When they land on your site, we don't really know much about them. We just know the site that they come from. We don't really know the reason they click the link. We don't know whether it's a link that you paid for. We don't know whether it's part of a campaign. We just know that they clicked the link and they got to your store. So then if we go to track that, it's pretty empty and all we can see is a link. This is where UTM tagging comes in. What it allows us to do is it allows us to append on the back of a link a number of parameters. And those parameters are standardized in places like Google Analytics and other platforms. So what we can actually do is we can set in those parameters a little bit more information. So let's just say it comes from one site, but you actually paid that site to put the link there and it was part of a campaign. We can now actually put in the URL that you're sending it from site A, it's the summer campaign, we paid for the link, and the ad is a display ad. We can put all that in the URL so that when someone clicks that link, that information gets sent directly into Google Analytics so we can see exactly where that ad comes into play. Where this is really powerful is if let's just say you're running a campaign across multiple, multiple channels, we can use that same campaign across multiple channels and we can actually see how effective that campaign is across multiple sites, multiple channels, everything like that so we can summarize it. It's a really great way to get granular on how effective your marketing is doing, where people are coming from, and it gives you control over the data that you send through the URLs. Now, the great thing is this is a fairly standardized type of protocol that pretty much every platform understands. Meta Ads understands it, Google Ads does, email marketing platforms do. So we can set a bit of a standard ourselves on the types of UTM tracking that we want to do. So I'm gonna take you through something called a UTM builder. It might make a little bit more sense. So this is the campaign URL builder that has been provided by Google. So the way it works is we put in the URL and the campaign that we're after. So in my world, one of my stores is fikegeardirect.com.au. Let's just say we're running a campaign which is Brendan's Boxing Gloves. Okay, that's the name of my campaign. I'm launching a new glove called Brendan's Boxing Gloves. Great. So now we're going to say to it is where are we going to actually advertise this? In here we'll just say it's Google and then we say what type of campaign medium it is. So the first thing we put in is the source of where this link is going to be placed. So in this instance we're going to say that it's coming from Google and in particular Google Ads which means we move down to the medium. And the medium is what style of link is this? So in this instance, we're just putting the word CPC in here, which stands for cost per click. And in our world, it refers to as ads. You can actually put whatever you want in here. You could write ads, you could write newsletter, you could do banner. As you can see, they're giving you a couple of examples here. So this is just so you can identify it. I would recommend trying to keep it relatively consistent through time and come up with your own sort of schema so you can recognize it. And this is where we come into the campaign name. So in here, we could write something like the 2024 glove launch. Okay, so this is the campaign name so that we can recognize it. This would be the same campaign name we would use across multiple channels. Now we can go a little bit further down here, we can say the campaign term and the campaign content. Now I don't usually go this deep, but if you need a lot more information in your marketing, then you could do this. So in term, it says like, what are the keywords or what are the ads? So sometimes we might put ads in, we might be like video 
uh, real or something like that, okay? So what we're doing here is we're basically giving as much information as possible so we can identify right down to where the click actually happens. All right, so then what happens is it's created a URL for us, which is says share the generated campaign URL. So this is effectively the way the URL looks. And as you can see, that's the URL there. And this is put in the UTM tag. So it's saying the source is this, the medium is this, the campaign is this, the uh, ID is this, and the content is this. Okay, so this basically just matches back to here. It really just adds these to the end of the URL. So effectively what we do here is we could copy and paste this and we could link it anywhere. Now obviously this is a Google ad, which means in Google ads, we'd need to go in and add this as part of the campaign parameters. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second. So that's pretty much how UTM tags work. All right, so how do we actually read these tags? Now, if we go back into Google Analytics, this is, this is where it really comes into play. So under Google Analytics, we've got our acquisition tab here. In here, we're gonna click something called traffic and acquisition. We can sort of see on this store here is we can see all these, what we call traffic sources. We can see we've got Google CPC, Google Organic, we've got direct and none. Now direct and none basically means that Google can't identify where this traffic's coming from. Now, if you don't use UTM tagging, Google does its best job that it can to try and identify where it thinks this traffic is coming from. It doesn't always get it right. If it has absolutely no idea, it throws it into direct. Okay, so direct doesn't necessarily mean that people are typing in URL. It basically means that Google doesn't really know where the traffic is coming from. So in theory, we should never have anything in direct. Very hard to get to that level, but we shouldn't actually have that much traffic in direct there. Uh, then we've got Facebook paid. So we can see this came from Facebook and it was a paid campaign. We've got Clavio campaign. Not said is often organic and we don't know what keyword that's reached it there. We've got Bing organic. We've got meta ads, CPC, because this one's around the wrong way, so it's got some bad tagging in there. And then link pop, obviously, is just a link that it's, that it's guessed, okay? So that's a referral. So if we have a look at this, at the top here, we've got something called session source, session medium. Now, if we go back to the URL builder, this actually references back the UTM tags. So we can see we've got source here, and we've got medium here. So this effectively links back to here. So we can make sure that every link that we put out finds its place within Google Analytics, okay? So we can also go through here and we can go a little bit further. We can go down and we can say, let's look at campaigns. And if we've got any campaigns tagged in there, this is gonna now change to this. So you can see we've got a couple of Pmax campaigns in here. Um, we've got some shopping campaigns. We've got a couple of CBO campaigns for our Facebook ads. So we are tracking our campaigns in here. We've got organic, we've got a little bit of referral. So we're seeing where the traffic is coming from. So you can see by having great UTM tagging, it allows us to really deep dive to see what campaign's working. So I can have a look here and I can say, well, this campaign here has generated me 402 sessions. It's a, a 2.7 conversion rate, $2,000 worth of last click sales. So it really tells us what this campaign at its level does for us. So you could imagine if you had this campaign name across multiple channels, we could now sum up how effective that campaign actually is overall. So if you had a different offer out in market, if you had a campaign that was going, you know, launching a new product, we'd put it in here and we could actually see at a campaign level how powerful that campaign was, irrespective of the channel that it comes into. All right, hopefully that's making sense. So now that we know the way UTM tagging works, we know how to generate a UTM tag, what we should do is put some default UTM tags across the platforms. And the main ones that I do it in is in my marketing channels. So I do it in places like Facebook ads, I do it in Google Ads and I do it in my email platform, which in this world is Klaviyo. Now, if you're working with third-party partners or media buyers or anything like that, we should also put UTM tags in there so that you can track the stuff that they're doing. So anyone that you're working with, you should always put a UTM tag so you can track exactly the data that they're sending you or, or the, where the links are coming from. So let's jump into Google Ads first and I'll show you where to put it. So once we're in Google Ads, we're gonna head to the campaign that we wanna edit. We're gonna click the settings tab here and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to additional settings, and we can go to campaign URL options. And this is in here where we want to add in the UTM tag that we generated from the campaign URL builder. Okay, so that one's super easy. Let's have a look in other places like Klaviyo. The great thing about tools like Klaviyo is you don't need to add UTM tags on every single email that you send out. And most email platforms have this sort of site-wide UTM tracking, we just put a few parameters in there. So I'll show you how that sort of works. We head over to your settings for Klaviyo and we go into other, we're gonna click something here which is called 
tracking. We're gonna click the UTM tracking tag. So in here, we can see we've got UTM parameter, we've got campaign value or flow value. So if you're running a campaign, it's gonna use these values. If it's a flow, it's gonna use either of these values. And you can see here that it uses the exact same parameters that we see in the URL builder. So we've got the source, we've got medium, we've got campaign. But the thing here is we can have a variable in here. So under campaign, as an example, we would choose campaign name, or we could choose campaign ID, or we could have the campaign name send date, et cetera, et cetera. I typically just have campaign name in here. Same thing for flows. We could do the flow message name, we could do the email subject, we could do whatever we like. But basically what happens here is when it gets added to the URL, it's gonna add the real campaign name in here. So the source is gonna be email, the medium is gonna be campaign, and it'll add the campaign name in. For flows, it will be email, automation, and then the flow name. Okay, and at the bottom, we just wanna make sure we tick uh, automatically add UTM parameters to all your links, okay? Now let's pop into Facebook and have a look what we do there. So here's an example of a Facebook ad that we have created. So this is advertising a certain brand of glove. Now we've set this up as per normal. Now, if you need some help setting up Facebook ads, I do have a couple of videos on my YouTube channel that talks all about how to set up Facebook ads like a boss for e-commerce stores. If you're interested in it, make sure you check out the rest of the videos in my channel after you finish watching this one. So what we wanna do here is we've got the website URL, but we want to append tracking tags to it. Now, Facebook makes this super easy. If we scroll all the way down, we're gonna see here we've got this website URL and you can see I've actually got tags appended to this. Yeah. Now, we don't need to go in and use the URL builder. There's one built in directly into Facebook. So we're gonna click build URL parameter and it's effectively the same as what we saw before. We've got campaign source, we type in meta. We've got campaign medium. We either use the standard that we wanna use, whether it's CPC, PPC, it paid. Now, as you can see in my analytics one, we weren't being consistent, so we had a few over there, but I like to stick with CPC personally. Then we'd use a variable, which is campaign name, but you, I'll show you, there's other options in here. We could do the ID, we could do the ad name, ad set name, we could put whatever we want in here. Again, I'm gonna do campaign name. It makes more sense to me in my business. Then we've got uh, the type of content. Now this is additional tag that we have. So this would tell us what ad is working, okay? So we could drill right down to ads in Google Analytics. And then we click apply here. That's just gonna apply that directly into that URL. So what this means that when these ads show, not only will we be able to track right to the ad level in the Facebook platform, but we're also gonna be able to track right to the ad level in analytics platform, okay? So we can sort of see what's happening there. We're adding all these tracking tags on the back of URLs so it all falls into this one spot in Google Analytics and we can see how much revenue it's generating, what the conversion rate is, what the average order value is, what the bounce rate is, all the stuff that we need to know right down to the level that you want to track. So hopefully you found that video useful. UTM tagging is a really powerful thing that you can use to really understand the data, get control of the data, Put it all in one place so you can make sense of what's happening in your campaigns, where you're spending money, what's working, and what isn't working. I hope you found this useful. If you wanna check out some of my other videos, ones that are more suitable for you should be recommended next to me here, so be sure to click them. And if you haven't yet subscribed and you really got value out of this video, make sure you subscribe and listen out for some of my new ones.